Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. The first thing I'm going to do is play you Paul's piano part exactly as I have transcribed it and I'm pretty sure exactly how he played it. Maybe I got a thing or two wrong, but first I'm just going to play it for you and afterward I'm going to talk about it at length. There's a PDF that I have made of this uh, that you'll be able to see as I go through the video that's available to you and you can see how to get it at the end of the video at this timestamp. Sorry, I forgot to take a video of this part. It's just the intro. One, two, three, four. I know it's true. It's all because of you. And if I make it through, it's all I typically won't do this kind of thing, like tell you exactly what to play, but I think that this moment is poignant where we have, you know, this whole situation where Paul needed to play along with his friend who wrote this, you know, in the 1970s. And it's like, it's a moment. It's, it's Paul trying to pay justice to something 
trying to support his friend. I can't even like start to imagine what that must be like, but it, I, I, I know that it was an honor for him. It had to have been an honor for him and also kind of a, a heaviness like to pay a tribute to what John did on his original piano track, but also at the same time, maybe to realize that John didn't have nearly as long to learn to play the piano as Paul has had. Paul has had an extra 40 plus years on what John got. So I think, you know, with all this added experience, Paul is a better piano player now than John was in 1970, whatever. And, and he's also got more experience. So you can notice right off the bat that Paul chooses to play the melody and then have a little rhythm. Right, again here. I know it's true. The thing that John did do is, is to just have rhythm the whole way through and then to have a little echo. I know it's true. Something like that, like almost every time. Paul decided to leave that out for some reason artistic choice, no big deal. Here's another little thing that I noticed. We, uh, we have this part, uh, and if I make it through, it's all because of you and Paul. Here's the melody note. Paul decides to add this D. So that it becomes an A minor 11, kind of. It doesn't have the 7 in it, but, but it has the 9 and the 11. And it's so melancholy, isn't it? John didn't have that, so there was some more dissonance. And so with John, he's just playing you. So all of the dissonance comes in this B note that he sings. But with Paul's playing, he... He adds a note and he plays the note that John's singing. And I think it's a great choice. I, I really like it better this way. Also, we need to remember that John wasn't trying to play his best piano. He's just playing a demo that he thought probably nobody would ever hear. He's pro it's probably just a placeholder, you know, for when he got around to recording it. So no shade thrown whatsoever at John's piano playing. There's a section that Paul, Giles, Ringo, I don't know who, decided to cut. It's uh, maybe called the pre-chorus. And let's let's listen to the very first part of it right now. I can't play you big examples or I'll get demonetized. I, don't wanna lose you. I think the way that it gets in to this section is a little awkward and Paul might have fixed it if they were writing this together. He might have said, let's try to get to that first chord in a different way. So John's playing. Then he goes A minor, G to F minor seven. I don't wanna lose, like that. And F minor with these notes is pretty far removed from A minor where we just were, you know? So I wonder, the melody is, I wonder if, a, if an F half diminished chord might've been a better choice because it shares a note with A minor, let's see. No, it, it's a little, that's no, that's not really good either. Maybe there was a, maybe with the strings, it could have been a stronger. Maybe something like that could have made it stronger. Like if it was in the strings. Ooh, I don't wanna. Maybe something, you know, maybe Paul and John could have put their heads together and come up with a, a good way to switch from section to section. It's a beautiful section. I, I wish it could have been left in, but here's the real reason I think it wasn't. I think it's because John's vocal wasn't strong enough. I don't think he was putting his all into it and and it just, it's kind of iffy here and there. So I don't think, I think Paul just wanted to like save his friend and be like, yeah, we can't use this vocal. It wasn't John's best. That's my take. I know it's true. 
This is one of my favorite parts of the whole song, John Lennon's phrasing right here. It's all because of you. He could have gone, it's all because of you. I feel like that would be the safe choice that anybody might have made writing this song, but for him to go, it's all because of you. I love that. And if I make it through, it's all because. And most of the time when he does this, cause. That's so beautiful, right? It's like harmonic minor scale. And you never hear John do a big run like that. It's like he's saying, uh, you, all of you crazy R&B singers, I'm, I want to, uh, I want to do something like, like you're doing or something like that. I, I never heard John like, no, I don't know. They're like 16th notes. Correct me if I'm wrong. He may have. Of you. Right. Okay. The second verse happens. Paul, Paul knows what it is to be a bass player. He knows what it is to give a new section some punch, right? And that's exactly what he's doing here. I could make a whole video on Paul's bass playing, but I'll let some bass player do that, I think. So here we go. We're going to kick it off. We're not going to do the same thing this time. We're going to change it up because that's what a piano player does, right? That's what a rhythm player does. And we've also got George's acoustic guitar parts from 1994 in here. So Paul is also paying close attention to that and how he's going to fit with George. 1994, George. I love it. Right, so we kick it off. Boom, boom. I really like that. Then he brings it a little bit. I think this is the time to let the vocal shine, not do much, you know? Just dig in a little deeper here. And now we've got the chorus, right? Just right into it. I like how they just went right into the chorus a couple of times. Now and then. But the strings are here, so we get a different rhythm from Paul. Now and then. I miss you, right? Boom, boom, boom. It's giving support to the strings. Oh, now. Now it, now it kind of gets quiet and it's a little bit hard for me to tell what he played. There for me. And then he lays out for a couple of bars. Then we've got just like the beginning, pretty much. And then we're gonna come back in on the chorus. Now and then. This time we're just quarter notes, but we've got one little bass thing here. Again, I mean, that's the bass player in Paul. He knows how to get things moving, right? The and a four to one, like that just, it does. It just boom, launches you somehow. Oh, oh no, another bass player thing. And then I want you to be there for me. And, and we don't go back and do this again. Always to be there for me. Like, it just goes bam straight into the guitar solo of this like B maybe C section and just lands it's a modal interchange right we've just got directly changing to D minor from D major and I love this solo that Paul took on his lap steel guitar in the style of George Harrison he says I believe him At first I was like, w this wasn't really much of a solo, like it wasn't flashy, it, um, it, there wasn't much to it, but the more that I've listened to it, the more that I've realized this is one of those just subtle but powerful George kind of moment where the notes chosen were exactly right. to the seven to the natural six and then the five on the C chord Do -do -do. repeating it Ooh -hoo -hoo. it's so 
pretty. I mean, it could be a lyric, right? They could have written a lyric over this section, but this is where you pay homage to George. I think it's beautiful. I love the F sharp over the E minor chord. And somehow that just makes me so sad that George is gone. Like all these beautiful notes that Paul chose for this solo make me sad that George isn't here, wasn't here for this. Um, ah, I'm choked up. Uh, wasn't here for this 2023 session. Because who knows what he might have done, but oh man, I think Paul dug deep for this one. piano part is just supporting right there and of course the strings are doing their own thing piano part just supporting then we're back I know it's true here it's um we're not doubling anymore because it's time to do something different Paul knows that he wants to move it forward he wants to wrap it up culminate the whole thing in a brand new way that that doesn't detract but is different so it's it's rhythm you know I know it's true. I love this rhythm. It's all because of you. That's a new rhythm too. We haven't seen that. Uh, to me, it kind of makes the lyrics stand out a little more. Because of you. And if I make it through, it's all because of you. It's just time for Paul to kind of go away. It gets quieter and quieter and quieter. I had to kind of guess at this part. I think maybe he finishes this and then he's just out for the rest of the song. For the beautiful um, outro that changes to 3-4 for a second. John Lennon's demo did not do that, but I think it was, um, it was really nice. I'd like to know who made that decision. Anybody? All right, now I'm going to tell you everything else that I think about now and then, but not before I tell you how you can get the PDF. The PDF comes kind of as a free gift if you sign up for Nebula. Nebula is a platform much like Netflix or Hulu or YouTube, but with no ads ever, and it's all for educational content. I put all of the content that you see of mine on YouTube on Nebula, but you can watch it without ads. You can also watch it earlier than you can see it on YouTube. I always put it there at least 24 hours earlier, and I'll put bonus videos and extended content videos for you on Nebula, as well as you also have access to the four classes that I have produced with Nebula. One of them will really help you if you're into this kind of stuff that we talked about today, like the chords that Paul chose, the choices, the colors that he added. It's my Nebula class, Everything I Know About Chords, part one and part two. It's nearly two hours of instruction, just telling you everything that I know about chords. And it comes when you sign up for Nebula and you sign up for Nebula by using my code so that you get a big discount It'll only be $30 for the entire year. Go to this video on Nebula, look in the description and you'll see a little URL that will take you so that you can have the PDF all to yourself. All right, Paul, Giles Martin, Ringo Starr, they had some executive choices to make here. I'm not sure which ones of them made the decisions. I'm gonna guess that it's Paul and mostly talk like it is Paul, but I think that Ringo and John had a really special relationship. You can watch my video about the Beatles Get Back. if you It's on YouTube if you'd like to hear more about that and, and what I think about John and Ringo. I think, they're, I think it was really special the way the two of them connected. But Paul had to make some executive decisions. There were some places where John's lyrics were kind of unintelligible or vague, probably unfinished. Um, Maybe he, you know, he just was using a sound as a placeholder and he didn't really know what he wanted it to be yet. And Paul and John did that for each other all the time when they wrote together. We saw it. We've seen it, right? 
Um, so Paul was used to that, and he was used to being the one to say, what if we try this? Uh, Anoka, you don't like that. What if we try this? But I, I want to say that while Paul was making these kinds of decisions, he also had to make a few melodic decisions. He had to decide to cut the pre-chorus, right? Um, he had to decide on all the instrumentation. He had to, I think, decide to use a digital piano. I think it was some kind of a plug-in. I don't think it was a real piano. I don't know if John uh, would have approved of that. But, you know, it's 2023, and John did like to mess around with new technology. So I kind of think that Paul would have just trusted his gut and pretended like his buddy was still alive and that they were just still bouncing ideas off of each other, making decisions together. And I mean, I call it an executive decision, but I'll bet that it was an inspired, all of the decisions were inspired and that Paul was trying to um, tap into whatever John was giving from wherever he's at. That's how, that's how I feel it probably was. And, and I don't think that John would have been like cursing them from heaven or, or saying, you know, how dare you cut my pre-chorus or, I, I really don't feel like that's the case. And which brings me to the point that I want to make about their music video. Have you watched the official music video? I was, I watched it all the way through. And then, and I have to say that when they started bringing, what they do is they, they use, I don't know, some kind of AI to digitally enhance old images of the Beatles and bring them in the room, whether it's 1994 or 2023 and Paul and Ringo are playing with older versions of themselves and versions of George and John throughout the years. And when I first saw it, I was like, nah, they're just, they're just using technology to, uh, I don't know, it's too much, right? I was like, that's cheesy. And then as I watched it unfold, I started to get it. And and when it, was, when it was over, I was a little emotional. And then I called my son and my husband, who were just in the other room. I said, have you guys seen this official video yet? No, we haven't. Okay, watch it. And the same exact thing happened to them when they saw it. They both went, eh, I don't know about that. I was like, give it time. And, and I don't know if they quite caught what I caught. I don't know if I caught what you caught. But, but this is what I want to say. I want to say that I think while they were making these decisions and re-recording their parts and listening to the orchestrations for the first time, conducting the orchestrations, making decisions in the mixing room. I want to think that John and George were around. And I don't think that John would have been there saying, no, how dare you do that? Don't, don't screw this part up, Paul. Like, I think that after 40 years have passed, um, that John would have tapped into that side of himself that we saw in Get Back, that side that screwed around all the time, the side that the first time I watched Get Back that made me mad. I was like, how are they ever going to get anything done with John Lennon just being a complete goofball all the time and distracting everybody and, and like not sticking to the task, right? Like, but as I watched it more, I realized what John was doing. He's doing what any good team captain of a sports team would do. He knew when to get to work, when to get stuff done, but he also knew when to lighten the mood. He knew when everybody had just about had enough and they needed to be really silly for a little bit. And he was great at it. And I think that Ringo felt things deeper than people may have realized. And maybe we've all realized it now that we've seen Get Back, but just the faces when they cut to him that he makes as he sees the tension in the group. I think, um, I think John was screwing around for Ringo's sake and for George's sake because he, like, he just didn't want things to, to go there, you know, to like end up being as tense as, as they would inevitably, inevitably get sometimes. So I think John, I think what they've done with this video where they have him just messing around, right? Like, like doing silly things with his hands, dancing a little bit, like being a, a dork up there, like conducting the orchestra from beyond is kind of genius. I think it's how he would have been. And I think, um, 
I think that I was Paul's choice. I don't know. But I, I think Paul was probably like, let's show John, if we're going to have John and George be a part of this, let's show them for who they were and, um, and what, it, what it must have felt like for Paul and Ringo as they went through this journey of remaking this song. It must have felt like, oh, George would have done this here. George might have said this here. John, John would, have, would have laughed at that. John would have made a, you know, an inappropriate joke right here. Like, they knew their friends, and I'll bet that this experience brought them back even more than maybe any other experience has over the past 40 plus years. So I love that. I love the video. I hope you had fun going through this with me and uh, digging a little deeper. That's what I do on my channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and sign up for Nebula. You're going to have fun over there. You'll see lots of other music YouTubers that you already know who also put things early and put things extra on Nebula, like Mary Spender, Adam Neely, Polyphonic, Charles Cornell, and lots more. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music. Oh my gosh, there was one more thing I wanted to say, and that is the backing vocals. I just wanted to say that I love hearing old man Paul's voice with young man John's voice. I know that Ringo's voice was in there too, but I honestly can't hear it as well as I can hear Paul's. Okay, I digress. That's all I wanted to say. Isn't that beautiful?